Hey yo, it's Plan V back in KSP, and today we're going back to the Mun, which I know a lot of my videos have been centered around the Mun lately, and I should really move on to something else. But this isn't too much of a structured video, this was more of just a fun build for me, as I tried to build the smallest lander that I've ever put on the Mun. I took inspiration, I, I was watching, uh, just scrolling through YouTube, and I found a video by Khan Gaiman in which they built an ejection seat-like item to get to the Mun. And I was like, hey, that's kind of a cool idea. So I stole the idea, uh, left a comment thanking them for the uh, video idea, and built it. So as you can see here, this is the actual lander. Um, there are a couple of small tweaks that I make to it before it actually makes it to the surface of the MUN, but you get the just. Uh, it's those, Os I think it's the Oscar B fuel tanks, uh, some solar panels, monopropellant, um, batteries, landing legs, and then just the, the seat on the top with the single aerial. There's no no science on board, so it's kind of more of just a, a mission to the surface of the MUN with no science. Um, and then I ended up putting trying uh, trying to get some of the oxidizer with the liquid fuel. We have two of the Mark 1 rocket tanks and then Mark 1 liquid fuel tanks, and then a rapier on the bottom, a uh, rapier engine, which has the benefit of air breathing mode as well as closed cycling, which comes beneficial later. This is the first attempt of, of a launch, uh, activating that rapier engine, let it ramp up and thrust, and then we'll release those clamps, and then you'll see why this is not the final design that actually makes and uh, makes it and gets us to the MUN, because when we release those clamps, eventually, there we go, uh, we don't have enough thrust to wait. I believe our TWR is like 0.31, so very low. Um, not enough to even keep us airborne, so I try with some of the Separatron uh, SRBs to get a little extra like push, doesn't quite work. I try different formulas of like fuel tank orientations, uh, wings, SRBs, like full stack SRBs to try to get us up uh, to a good altitude. This one I guess I forgot air intakes, which is fine. Um, I tried it angled, which gets us into the floor, angled with more fins, different SRBs to get in there. And as you can see, this one's actually a pretty good one. We get a good uh, good launch. I guess I just don't pull up or it doesn't have a, a good boundary. So we end up just uh, taking an accidental ocean mission. Uh, our lander, I guess, also doubles as a submarine. So we're just, uh, we're going to see how far we get. And that's about 404 meters. So now we know. At this point, the, the engines that I have on the landing stage here aren't enough to push it any further. So... I take the idea that just launched and we slap some wheels on it and we're going to turn it into an SSTO kind of. Uh, I dub it the SSTKO, the single stage to kind of orbit. And you'll see why in a bit. That's because uh, the it's, it's really a two stage item. The winged stage does get us to orbit eventually. Um, but the front stage comes off and then continues on to the, uh, to the MUN. Uh, so it's kind of an SSTO. The winged stage itself doesn't have enough to circularize completely so that's why i'm calling it to kind of orbit uh but here we are i've made an addition to the actual lander which is those uh, those donut tanks just to give it a bit better of a um delta v and then here we are with the the same kind of setup with the rocket tanks and then liquid fuel tanks so we have the oxidizer as well as uh i should be adding them in a second some uh um of the air intakes we have smaller wings to help cut down on drag at uh, Mach 1, Mach 2 supersonic flight um, and then control surfaces because obviously we need those. I try to like streamline and minimize everything that I could on this vessel to uh, cut down on drag because with an SSTO you, you want as little drag as possible. Uh, and then I ended up having to fart around with the wings for a hot minute but then I was able to get it into this orientation. I was having an issue where it was like there's an issue where if you don't get the wheels just right, they kind of like bounce around. And I was having an issue once I got to about like 60 or 70 meters a second, it would just bounce out and then like just smack into the ground. Thankfully, I was able to correct that. And here we are actually finally uh, able to take off. I have one of my action groups set to kind of take care of the flaps and allow us to get into a, uh, a pitched uh, a pitch just slightly above the horizon line and then we just let it rip and here we are just gaining speed at low al uh, altitude and then eventually it's going to kind of naturally drift into higher altitude 
as we pick up more. So here we are at like 450, 500 meters a second, going 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 10,000 meters above uh, sea level. Picking up a lot of thermal energy, as you can see, as we're still in the, uh, the atmosphere, but we're making it up to the, the thinner bit of the atmosphere. You know, 1,000 meters a second. We finally hit the closed cycle mode in which we're burning the oxidizer in that rapier engine. I'm trying to just get a uh, an apheropsis of, I believe I get it to like 77, uh, 77,000 meters. Uh, and then we, here we are just trying to circularize. Unfortunately, it's on the dark side. I didn't launch during the day, which is kind of an oversight on my part, but that's beside the point. Um, after we get to a fairly good circularization point, we undo that fern and then we'll just go ahead and pop off our lander and this is where that to kind of orbit comes into the ssto because although we are technically in orbit the winged part will not make it into a fully circular orbit so we go ahead and we just burn these engines here to end up circularizing and i'll cut back over to the uh, the winged section in a moment to show you what happens to that uh, we smack into the atmosphere very kind of shuttle like um, just doing a bunch of S-bends, just trying to distribute that, uh, that thermal energy. Luckily, it's a fairly uh, small vessel, so we don't have to worry about it heating up too much in the atmosphere. And then eventually, once we can ride ourselves, we'll, uh, we'll cut that rapier engine back on now that we're back into a, an atmosphere that contains oxygen in which we don't have to burn oxidizer for because we still have quite a lot of uh, just regular liquid fuel. Uh, some time passed, I'm not the best at landings as you'll see here in a moment, but we get it back to the ground safely and uh, I'm just trying to get a, a fairly decent approach. I make it end up uh, just flaring way too hard and, and burning out that, uh, I'm just hitting that rapier engine and it goes bye bye, but at least that, uh, that wing section is able to be recovered. Uh, here we are burning towards the MUN, going for a fairly low periapsis of I think it was like 40... 40,000 meters if I remember correctly uh, it probably shows here in a moment and then um, just seeing how much it needs to get a circularized um, and then also a mid-course correction burn to kind of help with our inclination around the, uh, the equator so we have a more equatorial uh, orbit around the Mun so here we are doing that very little burn to get the uh, the better equatorial orbit and then just double checking what we need to do to get an, an actual circularization we're going to time warp our tiny little vessel and here we are we're about to do the burn for circularization and there it is we're basically circularized at this point so what we're going to do is try to get around to the other side of the mun uh, and just try to shoot for that crater there that you can see just to kind of the middle right of the mun so we'll go ahead and start burning. This is gonna get us into the, uh, I'll make a quick save as, as well in case I need it. Um, this is gonna get us closer to the surface and then we'll start burning to actually get to the, uh, to the surface at a safe speed, uh, velocity. So uh, yeah, I, I just, I was browsing YouTube, saw this video and uh, I thought I'd make a funny little mini lander i've never really done it before so i wanted to see how small i could get that still makes it to the mun uh spoiler alert unfortunately this doesn't make it back from the mun so we'll have to send a rescue mission to that so uh you know you take some you win some you lose some um but since i'm talking about youtube i'll go ahead and just start plugging you know please like subscribe if you like this kind of content and uh everything that you're seeing right now it does really help um I took kind of a hiatus, it was a, it was a busy last bit of September, but I'm going to get back to making videos again, so if that's something that you're hoping to see, then please like, subscribe, something about a bell, I guess. Um, but here we are just on our approach, trying to get a nice, very slow, we're at two and a half meters a second down, two meters down, just really trying to get it nice and slow, um, backing off on the engine and starting back up. These, these, uh, these engines that are on this craft are fairly low power, but they are great for a descent of a small light vessel like this. So here we are coming down at 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, and then I kind of just kill it prematurely and let it drop down. And uh, we landed down. 
So then we get our Kerbal out of that seat in a moment, plant our flag as is ceremoniously so regular for our Mun Landons. I'm um, just shutting down all the engines. I should have had an action group that let me do it all at once, but unfortunately I have to do it manually. Um, and then we'll hop on out. My cats are going crazy, oh dear. Um, eventually, there it is. I was trying to figure out how to leave seat. Uh, turn on the RCS backpack and we're gonna make it down to the surface and then throw up one of our um, lovely, lovely flags. And uh, seeing that we're planting a flag, that means we're getting close to the end of the video. So like I said, please like, subscribe, comment if you want. I love comments, I love interactions with you guys. Uh, I should have another video coming up relatively soon in the continuation of the colonizing of space, uh, probably with a Mun base for some mining. Um, but here we are getting a nice cinematic of that flag going up. Realize that it's the wrong side, so my, my uh, logo is backwards, but you know, that's beside the point. Posterity is only good for so far, and here we are just getting back into our little seat getting the Kerbal ready for their uh, eventual rescue mission. Like I said, this won't make it back to Kerbin, so it's going to have to be rescued. Uh, but I appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next video.